Um, I took two kids and one to go, and I did uh, four yogurts recently, and it was $25. And I almost turned the cup over to see if there was some weights or something underneath it. I was, I was pretty, pretty amazed. But all in all, it's still a fun concept, and you can't control the price. Um, so if you haven't seen that, um, look for those. Those are coming in, in various formats. Um, what else? Uh, at, at the end, I'm going to tell you what you probably most want to know, and that's what's happening uh, with Kevin from the Wiener Factory, as uh, I've been in touch with him. So I want making sure you all stay awake for the end of that. Um, you know, I look for the new administration, you know, in Washington to have some impact on some of the confidence and fear issues going forward. Um, clearly, projects are stalled because money's not flowing. Um, through as easily um, as Ellen mentioned, and, and that's a factor that's going to remain probably for the foreseeable future. But we're hopefully that uh, Washington will, will push some things through and, and money will flow through to all these businesses who need um, their credit lines back. Um, some of you may have uh, home equity lines that are used for business. The banks are evaluating credit lines, reducing credit lines and hence reducing their risks um, at the same time. Um, some of the uh, issues that are going on with some of the tenants, just kind of moving around, um, some of these stores that are closing, is the bell gonna ring? No, no, you're fine. Oh, good. Um, some of these stores that are closing, um, they're dealing with their landlords, and the landlords are having to make serious decisions, and they're evaluating the market, and we're consulting with a lot of landlords and a lot of tenants on both sides. And we're getting, um, you know, the tenant has to decide how much, if they're going negative every month, they want to pump in, obviously. But they're in discussions seriously with these landlords. And it's really a case-by-case -case basis um, with each landlord as to how they want to treat it. Some landlords have no debt on their property. Some landlords have highly and high leverage. So those are issues. But what we are advising most of the landlords is to evaluate it, um, what used to be maybe three to five months to lease a space is probably more like four to nine months, um, just because people are holding back and launching um, some of their new businesses. There's a lot of fallout from the real estate related jobs, construction, escrow companies, title, banks, lending, mortgage, and a lot of these people are going out and looking for stores to open to create jobs for themselves. Um, to generate income, so um, there is business out there, but at the same time, they're trying to look at timing and, and when is the right time to launch some of these new businesses and survive at the same at the same time. Um, but the landlords are open on a case by case basis to some of the concessions and discussing um, with some of these stores and the tenants, and they are getting assistance, and we're advising that they should be assisting on a case by case basis. Um, because the vacancy doesn't help, doesn't help the neighborhood. Um, they do have debt issues, but more importantly, um, there's different ways to structure it. Perhaps there's forbearance, um, but in the meantime, we fully support that some of these tenants on a case-by-case -case basis um, receive some temporary concessions. Um, some landlords have long-term leases, and they don't want to uh, give out these concessions and would rather see the space turn and, and those are case by case basis as I said but you know a lot has to do with what location does it have parking does it have signage what's the condition of the space has it been remodeled is it not how much money does it need so we go through a, a, a lot of analysis and try to figure out um, where he is relative to current market rates and uh, what the new rate may be, and sometimes often we're looking into, we're advising, um, perhaps you have to look into the tenant's books, because some of these tenants are trying to take advantage at the same time uh, in trying to get some rent concessions in this marketplace. Um, as far as some of the larger retailers, um, some new things that you're going to see, and, and they're innovating, is uh, companies like Staples, where you typically saw a 15,000 foot store. Um, they are launching a new program on a copy and print store, much like FedEx. Um, FedEx has tripped up and was originally you know, an 
the air carrier, they bought Kinko's, and um, the oil crisis really uh, had a great impact on their business model, and they didn't get quite the vertical um, lift, no pun intended, that uh, they thought Kinko's was going to give them, but um, they faltered, and so you're going to see these staples copy and print stores more in about a four or five thousand foot format. And their goal is to do the copy and print, to have some of their better uh, moving inventory items, to have a very slick, user friendly, and assisted um, internet uh, counter where you can come and order. And for those that are not as computer adept, they want to make that process um, very user friendly. Um, you talk about banks, believe it or not, there are still banks out there that um, want to be in Sherman Oaks because they know there are depositors. And uh, it's odd to hear, but um, I am getting requirements for banks still. Um, another, uh, what was interesting, I had a call. Um, uh, Studio City by Coldwater Ventura. Um, there's construction going on in that site. Um, that was a ground lease with Wells Fargo, and that will be a branch. Um, I think it's a single story branch there. But that, that deal was um, signed about two years ago. And they had to wait for the mobile station there previously to um, that lease to take out, and then they've had to do some remediation. But um, you will see uh, a Wells Fargo branch there soon. Um, I started talking about another uh, requirement. I mean, we're still seeing vast requirements. On the office side and the retail side, um, people that want to do things, uh, interestingly enough, um, of one of the larger furniture retailers, which I would have not expected to hear from in this marketplace, um, they have a, a similar format, much like um, Staples, where they're not going to have a full-fledged showroom, they want to have a 4,000 foot interactive um, catalog, where if you come, they'll have uh, designers, and very high-tech opportunity to be able to shop uh, and view furniture, uh, cut and paste colors, design, uh, have your plans and all, and do decorating all right in front of you, um, as opposed to having perhaps a 20,000 foot showroom and trying to do the inventory there. So they're trying to streamline it. All right, don't, don't tell you that. We have to listen to 